Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today is another nutrition video and today we are going to talk about the very basics of nutrition. So we're going to discuss ingestion, digestion, absorption of nutrients, and then the metabolism of those nutrients. So let's start out with some basic terms and let's see what you remember maybe from an AMP class. So ingestion is going to be the process of taking food into our mouth and starting the journey through the digestive tract. Digestion is going to be the process that breaks complex nutrients like complex carbohydrates and complex nutrients into much smaller ones that will then facilitate the ability of the body to absorb those nutrients. Motility is the movement of the nutrients by the muscular components of the GI tract. So this is going to be peristalsis that moves these nutrients through the muscular components. So Secretion is the release of digestive juices by the pancreas, by the gallbladder, so that those nutrients can be further broken down and then absorbed into the body. Absorption is actually the movement of digested nutrients through the GI tract and into the bloodstream for use by the body. And then finally, elimination is excretion of the waste products or feces from the rectum through the anus. So metabolism is the sum of all chemical processes that occur on a cellular level level. And this is done to maintain homeostasis. So really this is the, the speed at which food energy is burned. So with catabolism, we're breaking down substances and that's resulting in energy release. Whereas anabolism is where we're using energy to build substances. Now metabolism is increased or decreased by things that are going on in the body. So let's look at what increases metabolism. Anytime that we have a fever, our metabolism is increased. If we're shivering, hyperthyroidism is a hyper metabolic state. So increased metabolism, cancer, cardiac failure. If we're suffering from a significant portion of our body has been burned, wound healing, HIV AIDS. And then there are a couple of medications um, in particular that I can think of that increase metabolism, epinephrine, levothyroxine, which is the treatment for hypothyroidism and ephedrine. Now there are also some medications that will decrease metabolism and hypothyroidism is a hypometabolic state. So all of your metabolic processes will be suppressed. The medications are opioids. So remember that makes sense, right? Everything is slowed down. We can suffer from respiratory depression. Peristalsis is slowed. So decreased metabolism, muscle relaxants, and barbiturates all will decrease metabolism. Our basal metabolic rate is the amount of energy used in 24 hours for involuntary activities in the body. So just sitting on the couch, maintaining your, your normal body temperature, your heart is beating, your blood is perfusing, and you're breathing, inhaling, and exhaling, just basic involuntary activities of the body. So there are things that increase our basal metabolic rate. So stress, extreme temperatures, rapid growth period. So during infancy, um, especially during puberty. So those times of rapid growth, our basal metabolic rate is increased and also increased during pregnancy. Now our basal metabolic rate is going to be decreased during times of starvation, malnutrition. And then of course, as we age, our BMR will decrease as well. Now we have two types of digestion. We have mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion is going to be all the body parts that actually move food from the mouth all the way to the anus. So of course, we're going to start in the mouth, moving to the pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, finally to the small intestine. There are three parts of the small intestine, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Then into the large intestine, the cecum, and then the colon of which there is an ascending, a transverse, a descending, and a sigmoid colon, finally to the rectum. And then of course that waste will be expelled through the anus. Chemical digestion are going to be all of the enzymes and secretions that are excreted by the different parts of the digestive system that help us to break down food and then ultimately absorb it into our bloodstream. So salivary amylase, hydrochloric acid, gastrin, secretin, bile, renin, pepsin, protease, lipase, amylase, sucrase, lactase, and maltase. These are all chemicals secreted by the body that help us to break down food. Now here, just to wrap us up, are some key points. Remember, the small intestine is the main site of nutrient digestion and absorption. That's important. Mechanical digestion is where we're moving food from one organ to the next. So we're chewing the food, 
uh, our body uses peristalsis to move the food through the muscular structures. Segmentation also is moving the food through the body and the action of sphincter muscles of which we have sphincter muscles all along the way. Chemical digestion is the actual breakdown of those substances from the production and or storage of gastric and digestive secretions. And then of course, once absorbed nutrients that we've eaten enter the bloodstream and become available to all of our body cells for energy and nutrition. Okay, let's look at a few practice questions so that you can check your understanding. Now, of course, remember if you need more time to read the answer options, you can always pause the video. First question, when someone walks past a bakery and smells the fresh bread, the mouth begins to salivate. As the person thinks about eating the fresh bread, what other digestive function begins? And so the answer to this question is release of the hormone gastrin in the stomach. So peristalsis in the small intestine has not begun yet, right? We are just thinking about beginning to eat. Stimulation of pancreatic secretions has not begun because the food is not in our digestive tract and we don't have increased blood flow to the gut and liver. However, as soon as we begin to smell something that is tasty to us, the mouth begins to salivate and gastrin is released in the stomach. Which of the following is an example of mechanical digestion? And the answer to this question is the churning and mixing of food in the stomach. Salivary amylase, that's chemical digestion, bile, chemical digestion, and secretin chemical digestion. If pancreatic secretions were absent, finish the sentence. And the best answer is there would be no bicarbonate to buffer the acid in the chyme entering the duodenum. So if we look at the rationale for this question, functions of the pancreas include the production of insulin to regulate blood glucose levels, right? We know that insulin is secreted by the pancreas and the pancreas also secretes bicarbonate, which neutralizes stomach acid. A charge nurse is conducting a nutrition class for a group of newly licensed nurses regarding basal metabolic rate, which factor increases the basal metabolic rate. And this is a select all that apply. And the best answers to this question are lactation, prolonged stress, puberty. Those are going to increase our basal metabolic rate. Malnutrition and aging, especially over the age of 60, is going to decrease our basal metabolic rate. Okay, last question. An example of catabolism is, finish the sentence. And the answer to this question is breakdown of glucose to provide energy. So the building of new muscle tissue, the making of proteins from amino acid, and the use of enzymes to digest proteins and release amino acids are all anabolism, where we are building up but catabolism is where we are breaking down. Here is a link to a great quiz about the digestive system. I will put this link in the description box below. Now I do have one other thing for you today. If you want to put all of this information about mechanical and chemical digestion together, I do have a free product for you. It is the path of a ham and cheese sandwich all the way through the digestive system. So from eating that sandwich with your mouth, all the way through mechanical and chemical digestion, all the way through elimination. If you think that would be a helpful description for you to read, just shoot me an email and I'm happy to send you that free product. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram. I do post over there daily. In fact, currently, right now, I am doing a whole series over on Twitter and Instagram about NCLEX client needs categories. So if you want to learn all about how NCLEX tests, then come on over to Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.